Dutch parliamentarian Gert Wilders convicted in a court of law of hate speech. And what's the big hubbub about the president of Taiwan calling Donald Trump? I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance, and I'm fixing to tell you. Gert Wilders is the leader of the PVV party in Holland, in the Netherlands, which stands for the Party of Freedom. He has been in the parliament there since the late 80s and has held, he's been involved in several different parties for the last 10 years. He has been the leader of his own party, which as of right now controls about 30% of the Dutch parliament. Gert Wilders is poised, according to some polls, to be the next, the next Dutch Prime Minister. Right now, polls show him ahead. Now, this would be catastrophic for the European Union. It'd be catastrophic for the pro-Islamic immigration people, just as President-elect Trump's election was catastrophic to the left. Gert Wilders He's a good man. He's a courageous man. Here's what happened. And then I'm going to play the, uh, 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 actually, no, let's play the, play the clip. So you can just look, look at the, these three judges with the contempt that they deserve. And then I'm going to tell you what he said. De rechtbank ziet in de gegeven omstandigheden aanleiding te volstaan met de vaststelling dat de heer Wilders zich als politicus schuldig heeft gemaakt aan groepsbelediging en het aanzetten tot discriminatie. Daarmee acht de rechtbank hem voldoende gestraft. De heer Wilders zal dus schuldig worden verklaard zonder oplegging van straf. And I have a message for the judges who convicted me. You have restricted the freedom of speech of millions of Dutch and hence convicted everyone. No one trusts you anymore. But fortunately, truth and liberty are stronger than you. And so am I. I will never be silent. You will not be able to stop me. So what got him convicted after 20 months, okay? This is a 20 month trial. The judge said, we're not gonna put any punishment on him, just a fine. He said, fewer Moroccans, fewer Moroccans. That's it. That's like Donald Trump saying, we're stopping the Syrians from coming in. No more Syrian immigrants, period. We're ending the program. This is a public policy issue. Fewer Moroccans, because there are Moroccan Muslim terrorists who are coming into, um, into the Netherlands. And he has said repeatedly, no more mosques, stop the influx of, of Muslim immigrants. And this is a policy issue. These judges, no, I just think this through with me. Take it out of the discussion of immigration, or rather of fewer Moroccans, and just immigration in general. They're saying that he cannot say fewer blank. The judges equated the country of Morocco with a race, as if Gert Wilders was saying, we hate all people of African-American descent. This is insanity. What they are saying is insanity because saying fewer Moroccans is not racist. It's an issue of national security for the Netherlands. Just like saying no more Syrian refugees is an issue of national security for the United States. Now, <clears throat> this was a political trial. The judge said it was a political trial and it was a political verdict. And the judge said that just being found guilty is enough punishment for Mr. Wilders. 
So the judge is in effect saying, we wanted to humiliate him. We wanted to have him have the stain on his career of being found guilty of hate speech. But guess what? It might have the same effect on Dutch voters as some of the attacks had on Donald Trump for the nearly year and a half prior to the election. There's something afoot here, people, where good old folks like you and I, who are not racists, that, but we're fed up with our immigration policies and we're fed up with the stupidity and the insanity of the current ruling political class. There's something afoot where we might just, might just wake up to the danger that we are in and then write the course. I'll be right back. Congratulations, Gert Builders. A man is known by the enemies he keeps and by the scars on his back. God bless you, sir. If you own a business and would like to advertise on our program, please contact us. We are currently seen on over 130 television stations from coast to coast. We air at 8 p.m. Eastern, and then all times are local. We have a lot of reach, friend, and this is an opportunity at a great price for you to get your product or your service in front of hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people. Also, if there's something that's important to you and you'd like to have a month where you just say thank you to this ministry or promote a certain ministry or a certain cause, contact us. Our rates are incredibly affordable. You'd be surprised. And you, again, can reach into hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of homes. We're currently seen, in, possibly, in over 30 million homes. So give us a call, give us an email, and we'll put a commercial up for you. Tsai Ing-wen, she is the first female elected president of Taiwan. She was elected last January. And she put in a phone call to President-elect Donald Trump to congratulate him on his victory. This has caused a multi-day hubbub in the world of foreign relations. I'm going to explain to you the whys and the, as you might guess, the treachery of certain political figures in the United States. How come China says Taiwan is part of us and Taiwan, some of the people say, well, we sort of are, but maybe not. And then there's some people in Taiwan who say, no, we want to be a completely independent nation. Look at this map. Taiwan has about 23 and a half million people. China has roughly 1.4 billion people. So a population more than 50 times as big as China, mainland China, communist China has a population more than 50 times as big as Taiwan. Here's what happened. China was a U.S. ally. China was part of the allied forces that fought against the Japanese and in the, in the Pacific Rim, that's what they did. During, the revolu during World War II, a man named Mao Zedong, who was a communist, was fighting a civil war against Chiang Kai-shek, the leader of, um, of, of China. So after the collapse of Japan and the surrender of Japan, Mao Zedong continued his fight and Chiang Kai-shek ended up having to flee in 1949 to the island of Taiwan. They continued the, a state of war until uh, somewhat recently actually, but the people of the, the leadership with Chiang Kai-shek were the acknowledged government. We acknowledged them as the legitimate government of China and said, no, this communist thug, this murderous villain named Mao Zedong, no, he's not the legitimate government of China. And after World War II, when the United Nations, as we now have it, was created, Taiwan, the government of China, based in Taiwan, was on the Permanent Security Council. Did you know that? Taiwan. And then in the early 70s, through some, I, I, would, I would tell you, through greed and avarice and a betrayal of human rights, China was put into that seat on the UN Security Council, the Permanent Security Council, and Taiwan was kicked off. 
And then horrifyingly, I think it was 79 when Jimmy Carter broke diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Now, <clears throat> the Taiwanese people elect, they have elections and they just elected this president. Before we discuss the, the impact of this phone call, I want to give you some food for thought uh, as backdrop, all right? China has the number one economy in the world right now, okay? They passed us a couple of years ago. They are also our largest trading partner. So just take those two elements, largest economy in the world, our number one trading partner. And then think through, they have a six million man standing army. Six million men under arms right now. They recently purchased their first aircraft carrier from Russia. They build for Russia their Su-27, which is the fighter jet. The, the Chinese have had a multi-millennial, many thousands of years history of dominating that area. Right? There have been some quarrels with Japan along the way, to be sure. But China has a very long and proud history of being what it calls the center kingdom. The whole world revolves around China. And that those of us who are non-Chinese are regarded as barbarians by them. Okay? Mao Zedong took over China. There were hundreds of dialects. And he made it the law that they were going to speak one language and that they were going to use one written uh, language. It's not an alphabet. Did you know that? That you literally, I got to tell you this, I, I'll be right back, but I've got to tell you this. You cannot say to somebody, go stand in alphabetical order because there's no alphabet. <laughs> I'll be right back. Let the full weight of that sink in on you. Friend, this program is supported by friends like you who believe in what we are doing. We run a very tight ship. Thankfully, we are on over 130 stations across the country having tremendous impact. We get emails every day. We get letters in the mail. Not every day, but almost every day. We hear from people who love what we're doing. What people don't understand is that it's sort of expensive to produce a television show like this. It doesn't require earth-shattering funds, funds, but it, it does require financial help. So. I am asking you, if you enjoy this program, throw us a $10 or a $20 bill every once in a while, or even a $50 or a $100 check. You see the address there on the screen. Your gifts are not tax deductible, by the way, because we want to be able to say what we want to say regarding politics without the IRS telling us no. So if you like the program, I ask for your support. One of the greatest joys and passions that I have had for almost my entire life is music. And one of the best times that I had was putting together some albums in Nashville of songs that I wrote. One of the albums is called Dark Sunglasses Day. This is a country album, a lot of love songs and patriotic music. We've made it available to you online and I hope that you'll go take a listen. You might be presently surprised. You might even find yourself singing along. By the way, some good news, a, a federal judge has said no to the Michigan recount. So it's over, all right? Donald Trump will be the next president. And Jill Stein is gonna make a lot of money from her antics, but we knew that, I explained that. You, if you wanna understand why she's doing what she's doing, go back to my earlier show on Jill Stein. I have a long history of experience inside of the fundraising world, the speaking world, and I, I tell you exactly what she's doing and why. All right. So, President Tsai from Taiwan calls Donald Trump. Donald Trump takes the call. And this enrages the Chinese and has all of the public policy and foreign policy experts regarding China in a Twitter. I am, believe it or not, a foreign policy expert. I have a master's degree in, in, in the field of, of international relations. Yeah, I went to a military school. Diplomacy, a master's degree in diplomacy and international terrorism. Other schools call it their international relations program. 
And I look at our relationship with China in a very different light. And I'm going to tell you that right now, and I want you to ponder it, okay? And if any of these so-called experts ponder it, I pray God gives them wisdom and the ability to say he's right. At the dawn of this republic, our foreign relations were built on justice. Mutual justice, okay? Read George Washington's farewell address. In World War I, we went in as a matter of justice. We fought, we helped the allied forces of Europe prevail over Germany, and then we left. We still had an isolationist worldview, foreign policy, that was based upon justice. America's interest, the American economy, we're a free country. People wanted to come from all over the world to America just to be free, to have their own farm, have their own business, practice their religion without fear. After World War II, the victorious powers realized that England, who had been the most powerful nation for a couple hundred years in the world, the sun never sets on the Union Jack, sound as a pound. The British pound, gold, right? Gold currency was the currency of the world. And the victorious people meeting in Bretton Woods up in New Hampshire got the Americans to agree to be the new world superpower and that the American dollar would be the world currency, that international treaties, things of this nature, the World Bank, etc., all the things that emerged from that would, would function in, in the dollar, not the pound. This was a major setback for England. And like a drunken teenager, we said, yeah, yeah, I'm all that. And in, in one way, it was a great honor, but in another way, it entangled us and embroiled us all over the world. And then suddenly, our foreign relations were not based upon human rights and upon justice. They were based upon the dollar airfields, deep water ports where we could bring our, our Navy and our submarines. It suddenly wasn't about human rights anymore. Now think through this with me, and I'm sorry I, I get passionate because I despise the Chinese government. We have betrayed millions of people. You realize that there are people in China languishing in prison right now for celebrating Christmas. They make the Christmas trinkets for us and they're not allowed to own them. They're not allowed to celebrate Christmas the way we do. There's no open mass celebrating Christmas in China. There's no midnight mass. There's no Lutheran church standing proud and saying that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's no legal assembly of God church with people praying in tongues and evangelizing. They're still smuggling Bibles in. They're still, they're killing babies. Please, friends, think this through with me. We allowed China to come on to the UN Security Council. We broke off diplomatic relations with Taiwan and, and China instituted a one child per family policy. This is their thanks to the world. We're gonna forcefully abort some 20 million babies a year, a year. You realize that probably 300 million people, maybe more, around the entire population of the United States of America has been butchered, forced abortion, late-term abortion, where they're dragging women and begging for mercy and they kill their babies. That's China. That's China. And, and people are in a Twitter because President of Taiwan spoke with Donald Trump. Are you out of your minds? I'll be right back and explain to you the, the, the death hold that China has on the United States right now. I want to invite you to go to our website. Almost every book that I have ever written is available as a PDF online for free. We have a ton of products, training materials, tools that are available for you for free. All we ask for is that you give us your email address. That's it so that we can stay in touch with you, and yes, from time to time, ask you to support this work. So I'm inviting you, go to the, the website. Now for those of you who say, well, I, I don't want a PDF, I want a real book. You can get one of my books. All you have to do is pay for shipping and handling, and then give whatever gift you want. And if you can't afford anything, 
We'll send you the book for free. Just pay shipping and handling. Why are we doing all this? Because we want to change the direction of the country and we need to raise up a fresh generation of warriors to do that. That's why we have this tool. I invite you, go to the website, see for yourself. It took me 14 years to write it. Four rewrites, countless edits. I poured my heart and soul into Dragon Slayers. It points a very inspiring and painful book to write. I encourage you to go to our website and look at the reviews that we have gotten from readers of this book and then avail yourself. It's an allegory and I, I promise you, you'll be inspired. Remember those in prison as if imprisoned with them you yourselves being a part of the body. That's what the writer of Hebrews said. China is basically a slave labor camp. The whole country is. They don't have freedom of speech. They don't have freedom of the press. They certainly don't have freedom of religion. They don't have the freedom to, have, to get married and have as many children as they want. This is a slave labor camp. Now here's the disaster that Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon and Jimmy Carter and tragically people like Newt Gingrich when he fought for China to have its most permanent, most favored nation status, okay? Because it, it used to be renewed every year. And it used to be that human rights violations were a part of the discussion. And then when Newt was Speaker of the House, he said, let's be done with this. Let's stop having to redo, redo this every year, every two years. Let's just give it to them and be done with it. So any leverage we had to deal with human rights was swept away. All right, so now think this through with me. What did the Caesars say was required to keep the populace, the plebeians, slaves, keep them all happy? Bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. China is the number one producer of our circuses, people. It's a death hold on us. Go, Walmart and China together have helped destroy American manufacturing and helped enslave us to the addiction of cheap circuses. Go up and down the aisle. Go up and down the aisle. America used to manufacture TVs. America used to manufacture the circuses, things that entertain us. Walmart used to have signs. I'm old enough to remember. Proudly made in the USA, all over the store. They're gone, people. <laughs> They're gone. Because most of the circuses that you can buy, and just a lot of the stuff we need day in and day out, they're made in China. Communist China. That slave labor force is keeping us fed I'm not fed, I'm sorry, keeping us sated with our entertainment. Most of America's food supply is still from America, okay? We, we, we have our own beef, we have our own wheat, we have our own corn. Yes, we do get some beef from south of the border, but, and there is a few fish items now that are starting to come in from China. But we, if, if we had broken relations with every nation in the world, we're not gonna go hungry. But we could have a meltdown because that there's that certain part of the population and it's growing in its, uh, how, its economic rung, its educational rung. I mean, think of how many kids have got a college education now and they're addicted to circuses. Where do you think our iPhones are made? They're made in China. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you, this is a death grip because if we said, you know what? We're gonna put human rights first with the Chinese. This is a villainous, demonic, godless regime that runs it, these communists, okay? Don't let them tell you that communism is dead. 1.4 million people languish under communism in China. And if we said, we're gonna deal with China now based upon human rights, do you know how many shelves? If a trade war began with China, do you have any idea how many shelves in Walmart? would be empty, they have a stranglehold on us. 
And it's similar to the, the, the English and the Germans before World War II. We'll talk about that another time. Have a good weekend. I'm glad that the leader of Taiwan called Donald Trump, and I'm glad that Gert Wilders is going to be the next prime minister of Holland. Have a great weekend.